Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Zombieland Saga Revenge episode number 9. Alright, the previous episode, it was the first part of the episode, a uh, small little arc that we're having and I'm guessing we're going to continue from there. The previous episode, we got into Yugiri's past and it was the start of a little story where we got to see how the whole, like, you know, uh, the thing that whole saga, saving saga begins and how the ancestors uh, were also involved in all of this, you know, uh, th this guy uh, called, uh, I think his name was Kichi. He, he was like the only person who was like, you know, using like, uh, like uh, spreading pam pamphlets and like, like, you know, trying his best to revitalize Saga again. And uh, Yugiri was the courtesan who came from out, like, you know, from outside to Saga so that uh, like, you know, like he was, I think she was uh, bought, I think. No, I'm not sure about it, but I think like she was brought from outside. Yeah, she was brought from outside. The, the wealthy, one of the wealthy persons brought her uh, into the into Saga. And she was just now, you know, like, like leaving her life, rest of her life peacefully there. Now, because it was someone who was one of the hot shots of the place. And I don't know, this another guy called Ito. And I think he's also somehow involved with the person who brought Yugiri here because Yugiri is familiar with Ito and Ito also kind of saw um, Kichi like doing all of these things in on the streets and all and uh, like he thought that oh like I'll make fun of him and something but decided to help him in the end so all of these things there was a little bit a lot of mystery surrounding everything now I think in the end we saw Ito kind of like you know passing some kind of a little note to someone and and this can go either way either he is someone who is of a, like you know a spy kind of person from the uh like what can i say from the for the people who are in power here and maybe some kind of problem is going to happen in this episode regarding kichi because you know he's trying to like revitalize saga and people are kind of listening to him now like you know there are people who are getting interested so this might be like you know like they can take this as a sign of a rebellion or something i'm not sure there's a lot of confusing thing that's happening here but let's see you know like uh like in a nutshell i think there is something with ito like that might either be good or be bad for akichi probably bad because you know this is I think suppo not supposed to be a happy end has a happy ending because Yuzigiri kind of ended up being dead. I don't know how she dies, but probably something's going to happen. Like bad is going to happen. I'm like I'm prepared. I'm prepared for the feels. So let's get started with this episode. Today uh, we're here with Somilan Saga Revenge episode number nine. So yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. Alright, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. There you go. Oh my God. I think Ito is probably one a person from the government. Yeah, a lot of people listen to him now. Hmm, yeah. And that's kind of concerning. <laughs> what the? Oh my god, they're, they're fighting against each other. <laughs> okay. Is this yeah, it's Ito. Oh god. Yeah, that's not a good like as I was saying. Most probably Ito is someone from the government who is kind of keeping an eye out on everyone so that no kind of like you know, no rebellion, nothing that sort happens. 
and Kichi, like you know, everyone is listening to Kichi now. So he's kind of like uh, what can I say? One of the revolutionaries or something like that. And this is gonna go in a bad direction. I can feel it because I don't know. Like the whole story has a setting for a tragic end, and we know Yugiri dies somehow after this. I don't know how, but oh god. Okay, let's get ready for whatever is going to happen. <laughs> Free, okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh... All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Oh my these guys are pretty serious about everything. Like, you know, like, the old ruling class of Saga. Oh my god. Yeah, they're not, uh, like, they don't seem like, I don't know, like, I have a bad feeling about these guys as well, like, the people. They seem pretty serious about everything. Oh my god, yeah, there you go. Oh great, that... <sighs> They're making their own plan, wow. The voice. I'm going to talk about this later. Someone mentioned something in the comment and... The... Okay. The voice. I am Saga. Oh. Okay. Hands of man. <laughs> um. It's bitter. Nasty. <laughs> oh God, it's so nasty he fell unconscious. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, they're going overboard. Ah, god. They're just using him in a way, you know? Ah, oh, god. Wow.
Yeah, they might either convert him or like you know, like not listen to him at all. Either of it is going to happen. Yeah. Oh my god. Mm. Your idealism isn't enough to change the world. Wow. <laughs> That's the idealism he is talking about, you know, Ito is talking about. Still immature. Oh, there. Oh God. Who the? Oh, it's that. It's that guy. Yeah, he's some kind of spy, you know. Both of them. I'm guessing they he got kind some kind of notice that something's going to happen like they're taking up arms or something. Yeah, oh god. He'll be executed, you know? Like if caught. Yeah, he is someone from the government, I'm sure about it. Okuma-sama. Oh, to the people. Oh. Oh no, people might target her after seeing the picture. Oh god. To get to get to uh, oh lord, you know to pressurize Kichi, they might take her hostage or something. And it's snowing. Oh no! Yeah, the, the thing that I was thinking. This is probably what happened. New prefecture magistrate? Or maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, they've taken up arms. It's Ito, isn't it? Oh, is he like a samurai or something? Oh. So he's someone from the army or something. Who knows? Let's see. Oh God. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh my God. He defeated everyone. Oh.
Yeah, he's some undercover gov government agent. Oh, Lord. My job is there you go. Yep. Yeah, he He was letting him go because no one was listening to him. Oh god. Oh. Is this Yugiri? Oh no, who is this? Oh yeah, it is, it is Yugiri. Oh my god, Yugiri also knows how to. Oh god. Okay, run, run. Like. Wait, what's this dog doing here? <laughs> I'm guessing it's just a dog, you know? Not Romero. Hmm. Yeah, but She is true in a way because he is the one who lit the fire under everyone, you know, in everyone. God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, like, she knows how to fight. GTM on, wait a minute. Whoa! I need to check that out. Like, uh, that name is very familiar. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. Oh no, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh no, wait. Did... Oh, I thought she was going to get cut. Oh God. Oh no. Oh no, what happened to him? Oh, he's still alive. I will Oh no Oh my <laughs> God, the hell? God damn it. God damn it. This show. Okay, oh my god, Kotaro, come on. Uh. <sighs> Wait, how did she get the... I'm guessing it was still in her hair. When she died or something. Wow, okay. <laughs> oh, there, there she is, my mind. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay, that's... Wow! Okay, that was good!
Oh my god. Wow, that was great! There he is! Okay, I'm not confused here because of a reason. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah like we have like you know arrived at a day when like it's peaceful now Mm. Okay. Wow, that was great. Oh my god, this was one of the best episodes. Ah. Uh, uh, okay, that was really uh something. Now, okay, for the reason why I am not confused seeing uh the old uh, the, the person here is because someone in the comments mentioned that I think her, his name is um, I'll have to check it out again. I forgot. Like he's one of, uh, I think he's one of the, uh, like, uh, I think he says something about a, uh, a person who, like, you know, uh, like, like is like, what's that word? Like, I cannot find the word. Like, who use, like, you know, who is proficient with medicine? Like, a pharmacist. I'm guessing someone like that. Um, who is supposed to be uh, the person who was the reason why? King, uh, uh, the king of China. What, what was his name? I forgot. Uh, just a sec. Uh, I'm very bad with Chinese name. I'm sorry. Just a sec. Like I know him. Like he also comes in FGO, so that's why I know him. Uh, the emperor of China, uh, Xi Huang Di, I think. That's his name, isn't it? Qin Shi Huang. I think that's his name, isn't it? I might be wrong. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But like, you know, he, like he's supposed to get Im like, you know, he was supposed to be immortal. And this guy is supposed to be the person who is like, OK, let me just check the comment again. Like, you know, um, Okay, uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, okay, his name is Zhu Fu, the legendary doctor in China about 2200 years ago. Zhu worked for the first emperor in China called, here it is, Qin Shi Huang. Legend says that the emperor was determined to have an immortal life, so he asked you to find a medicine that can make humans become immortal. But Zhu never came back to China again. Legend says that Zhu had found the medicine to become immortal and lived in Japan. There's also the other thing that he lived in America. Okay. So this like this this old guy he's supposed to be Zhu Fu, like like I knew about uh, the Emperor of China like you know like I was like I knew about him from Fate Grand Order, uh, like uh, I again forgot his name, Qin Shi Huang. So like I knew about his like you know the things that he did he wanted to become immortal and all of those stuff I knew about it. So that's why like you know like like. I was thinking like yeah like something like that might happen here who knows like this is like this is a show with zombies so like immortal people it, it won't surprise me you know so I'm sure all like you know everyone who's seeing this for the first time seeing this guy uh, like you know being the bartender would definitely surprise them and I I I still had a little bit of confusion in my head but after like you know in this episode when we started I heard his voice 
and immediately I connected the dots at that moment and like you know and the, I also remembered the comment that uh, my uh, video had the previous episode so I connected the dots then and I realized that yeah this guy is that guy the bartender you know because we never saw his face before and that's also the reason like you know for the secrecy and we can see it now so probably something like that or who knows how he got like you know immortal maybe that's what happened actually so that's the reason why I was not surprised I'm sure everyone who watched this would have been surprised but yeah all right so this episode um like oh my god this was a a, a roller coaster of emotions I have to say like like the most emotional part in my opinion is I did not realize what was actually going to happen to Yugiri you know I I really did not realize I was always thinking like okay Yugiri is going to die how is, is, she, is she going to die is she going to get uh, take, taken hostage by the like you know the revolutionaries or is he going is she somehow going to get involved in the battle and like you know get injured and all like my mind was in, like in that setting you know like it had a certain I, I kind of envisioned everything happening like that so I was like you know I mentally prepared myself for seeing something like that you know for example uh, in the battle you guys you guys might get like injured and she might like you know fatal fatal wound might claim her life something like that or the revolutionaries might like you know uh, harm her or something else <sighs> never did I realize that like you know as soon as, as soon as I saw like them in the you know being like taken to uh, her being taken to the execution place that moment I realized what was actually going to happen to her and that's sad you know that's very sad because like I don't know like there's there's a, a weird feeling in that like scene because it's as if like she's alone at that moment you know like not alone as per se but like uh, Kichi he went on his own way to uh, I'm guessing to start uh, like you know to some place else to you know be like become a more of a you know influential person and uh change saga just as he wanted and she he went on his own way ito died so like the only people that she knew were these two characters these two uh, you know these two guys and like both of them are not there and like her last you know the, like you know her ending how how her story ends she, it seemed as if it was such a lonely scene where we see her by herself only sitting in like you know in, in front of them and they like executed her like it was such a lonely scene no one there and she all alone like that I, I think that really like was the most emotional part in this uh, episode like you know it's as if like she herself has like Yugiri herself has ca very lonely type of a vibe as we see you know like from uh, from before the like you know from from the beginning like she usually keeps to herself like very you know a woman of a very very less words doesn't talk much and everything and like you know like such a kind-hearted soul and everything and in this ep like you know in this episode in the previous episode as well we as we saw how she usually like as a courtesan uh, we saw her life after coming here she also like you know left lived her life quietly peacefully people usually did not come to her like people had this kind of a thing where they like you know like because she was the legendary courtesan they kind of like you know kept their distance and all so her whole life was lonely and then she found two person who she can like you know confide in the kichi and ito and in the end like, like you know how her story ends is again like all alone lonely no one there like the fact that she was executed was definitely sad but in my opinion that was even the sadder part like like i don't know like seeing your life flash before your eyes like you know on the like you know on the doors of death no one there for you all alone dying i think that's even sadder and that's what actually like kind of like you know like uh, made me break out because the scene was so lonely and sad <laughs> okay that okay I, 
Okay, I was so overwhelmed that I did not properly was able to read what they were saying at that moment. But with the blood having spilled and signs of rebellion growing in Saga, okay, oh my god, like I, I still was unable to like you know catch what's actually going to happen. We can see here they're like you know watering the sword, and I was thinking what's happening here. And then this scene comes in where we see her like you know sitting down, and the police officers were be behind her, and that's when it struck to me. And her tone of voice, the loneliness of this, like, you know, this scene, where there's like a little encampment of cloth, like, you know, being kept. And like, you know, only police officers are there, no one else, like, you know, she by herself going to face her death. That really overwhelmed me, you know, like, I was not expecting that. Like, it came as a shock at that moment. Because, yeah, like, Another thing that, as I said, this, like everything, like these, all of these things really reminded me of Gintama. Like, you know, a similar scene ha happened here. Like this whole thing was so Gintama-esque. And I remember like a similar thing like this also happened in Gintama, you know, this whole execution thing. I remember, I cannot remember, it's been a while I've seen Gintama. But it was also so freaking sad, you know, the, like, you know, like a scene like this that also happened in Gintama. I cannot remember what it actually was, but you know. Similar to this, like when a person was executed. Yeah, but I can, like, you know, I can remember the emotions that I felt at that moment. Anyways, um, so yeah, uh, okay, someone will have to accept responsibility and punishment for it. I think that this entire incident and my involvement with, will all be treated like it never happened in the end. If Kichihan asks you, please tell, I left Saga safely. Oh god, here's another thing. Like, Kichi won't even know that she died, you know? Like, at least, like, if Kichi, like, you know, knew that, yeah, she was executed and she died, obviously Kichi would feel sad and everything. But, like, you know, he would at least, like, you know, go and pay respects and everything, you know, to her, like, you know, to the grave and all. But... Still, like, it's sad, like, it's, it's like as if she kind of cut down everything in her life and became all alone at the end of her life. Like, she became truly alone in the end. And that's the saddest part. <sighs> and if you truly are Saga itself, then please guide the new Saga that Kichihan creates. And then the, this is goodbye. Okay. Uh, May 9th, Meiji 16, 1883. Uh, Saga gains independence uh, from, uh, from Nagasaki thanks to appeal from supporters in the prefecture. On August 4th of that year, the military justice reform law bans unilateral execution by military personnel. Thank you. Like, thank God. <sighs> On August 13th of the same year, the first Saga Prefectural Assembly is held. Yeah, Kichi changed everything that means after that. <sighs> And okay, I also did not notice this. I was also like, you know, uh, the Saga incident, like they're doing a Saga incident. So that whole thing, that little thing, the dance they did. So it was something like telling the story of whatever happened, I'm guessing, you know? Yeah, so th that was, that was like the theme of this, the, like, you know, the ending, the ending like dance that we had. All right, that was really good. And okay, so a little, a few things I, I had wrong. I, I thought like uh, Ito was somehow related to the person who brought um, Yugiri to, uh, 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 like Yugiri, Yugiri uh, to, uh, here in, in this place. Now, what was the name that they said? Uh, like, you know, Ito said, who brought her here? I, I, I've heard that name a, lo a lot, just a sec. Okay, Ito says. Okay, uh, damn it, I didn't think a legendary courtesan would be this legendary. Who the hell was the guy who set you free anyway? Have you heard of the name Shit 
Kichiemon. Okay, here it is. Okay, I'm I have to check this out. Who is Kichiemon? I feel like I've heard that name. Wait, I cannot. Just a sec. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Okay, I cannot. There is a few like... There's a Japanese actor by that name. I, I don't think... Th like... Okay, Samizu Kichiemon. Just a sec. Uh, let me check. Samizu... Samizu Kichiemon. Uh... Oh, okay, uh, uh, like... Like, a few things that I can find about him is, first of all, he's a character in Detective Conan. I forgot. I, wa I watched Detective Conan, but obviously so many characters I forgot. Um, and that's the only thing that I can see here. Like, you know, like, only, like, I don't feel, like, I don't see anything else. Like, only the, the character of Detective Conan. Like, they say that he's a doll maker during the Bakumatsu era. Excuse me. Uh, mechanical contraption. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I could not find some proper, like, you know, uh, source or some, like, you know, proper facts. So, if you guys know who this person is, like, this Kichiyamon, if he really existed or if it's like a fictional character, please be sure to let me know in the comment section because, um, I have heard this name. I don't know where, but I've heard this. Obviously from Detective Conan, I, because I watched Detective Conan. But not only that, I think I've heard it somewhere else as well. I don't. I can't remember. Uh, like, just a sec. Uh, like, obviously, like I know another character who, like you know, whose, whose name uh, is really similar to uh, Kichiemon, which is. Um, Another one of the Japanese, like, you know, another Japanese uh, person, legendary Japanese outlaw hero, Ishikawa Goemon. You know, Goemon, Kichiemon, their names, like, 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 are kind of similar. But I'm not, like, you know, like, I'm not, like, you know, like, confusing Kichiemon with Goemon. I know Ishikawa Goemon. He's like the gentleman thief, I think they said, like, called him. Something like that. So, uh, I'm not talking about Ishikawa Goemon. Kichiemon, I don't know where, but that sound, like, you know, that, that really... It's very familiar. I don't know where I heard that. But anyways, no. Um, okay, so yeah, as I was saying, so like a few things came like, you know, like I, I kind of like uh, predicted. The first thing is that uh, Ito was from the government, you know, but one thing that I was not able to like, you know, properly um, guess is that I thought like, you know, Ito was somehow related to the person who brought um, Yugiri here. So, I don't know, like, that that was wrong, you know, like, the person who brought Yugiri Kichiemon, he, Ito himself did not know about him, and he was, he himself was surprised when he heard, like, they called him Sheath Kichiemon, so I'm guessing he was probably proficient with the sword or something, and trained Yugiri, something like that, that's why Yugiri can fight so well, so, yeah, and, uh, yeah, like, a few things came true, how, as, just as I thought, as, just, as I said, like, Ito was from the government, and the thing that i thought that they were trying to probably uh, you know make this kind of uh, like you know whole rebellion or something and as ito said that i was not listening like you know I, I kind of like left him alone because no one was listening to him he was harmless but as soon as people started listening to him you know this happened now also another thing the guy the people who were from like you know who were from the the previous saga war the uh, the people the old like you know the people who were the uh, the main the, who got, who died all of those people who died while fighting uh, Ito those people like as they said they themselves had like a little thing like you know they had the fire like I'm sure it kind of like you know settled down but from 
um, keychains, like you know, speeches and handing out the, those pamphlets, I'm sure that fire started burning, and they again decided to kind of stand uh, and fight. But as as you know, like they themselves were kind of involved in the previous war, so they were a bit too overzealous. And that's why they started doing things on their own, you know, like not listening to Kichi and like made like, you know, like took everything in their hand. Unfortunately, like it's, it's not their fault. It was just that they were too like, you know, involved in this from the beginning. And yeah, that's what actually happened. Like they just like, you know, like, uh, like you know, Kichi kind of like lit the fire and that fire started burning so brightly and so like, you know, in such a manner that they like went through their like you know went running to their own destruction and uh, yeah they would have started a whole war and that would have been a complete like you know very wrong thing because a lot of people would die you know a lot of people innocent people would die like war means that so like it all stopped before something like that happened before it escalated to that and yeah and that's what like you know yugi said that your words kichi like if you give up after this your words they lit a fire in so many people like you don't have like you know you should not give up like go like you know run away from this place and try to keep your words you know bring make saga great again and like you know that's what he did as he like you know went away and i'm sure he did a lot of good things as as we saw like you know things started changing changing something must have happened after that we don't know what happened but it changed for the better and now we have saga you know now i don't know why but i feel this like you know kotaro is somehow related to kichi <laughs> especially because their, like you know their voice actor is the same and i don't know why like they have the kind of the same vibe and who knows maybe you know maybe he's like kichi's ancestor or something that might be it. that might be also the reason why like you know kotaro also knows uh, the grandpa uh, the bartender so yeah Another thing is, I'm guessing like she got her like you know the, her her hair, the hair like the kan what is that called kanzashi? Is that what it is called? The small little comb? Uh, mm. No, I think kanzashi means hair ornaments. No, it's not kanzashi. Sorry, uh, it's it's a comb. Kanzashis are different. Sorry, um, it's a comb. Uh, that comb that uh, you know the, she put on her hair that Kichi brought brought him, and um that i don't know how she got it after like you know being zombified but i'm guessing maybe it was left alongside her after her death or something you know like it was still in her hair or something like they kept it in her grave or something i'm not sure but something like that might have happened and that's why like she got it later on who knows or maybe it was like you know uh, i don't know like i'm not so sure actually what happened but you know Oh, or maybe um, the letter, not letter, the comb, maybe like Yugiri, uh, you know, left it with the grandpa and the grandpa kept it. And now after she became zombie, she, I, I, I think like the grandpa returned it to her or something. I don't know, like something like that might have happened. So yeah, it was a sad story, you know but yeah that was a great episode i really loved it so yeah i'm guessing we're probably going to get back to the funny stuff from the next episode and it was really heavy you know and and the thing that they did like you know it's so sad and everything and suddenly we come to the modern era and kotaro starts screaming on the top of the face tai is eating something like you know and people are kind of freaking out <laughs> like you know sad and then suddenly like goofy stuff happening my god like that, like <laughs> like they didn't even let us like take a breath and like you know settle ourselves like suddenly like all of these things started happening and it was so like hilarious you know <laughs> wow all right okay this uh video is going too long okay i'll stop it now so yeah guys thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to zombieland saga revenge episode number um nine uh so yeah uh okay yeah this was episode nine yeah episode number nine so yeah thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoyed my reaction be sure to press the like button and also subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say or anything you want to share i'll definitely check them out so yeah guys thank you guys for watching again i'll see you guys next week with another episode of zombieland saga revenge so until then goodbye and have a nice day